Hi, and welcome to the first part of making scientific figures with Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is a really powerful and nice vector graphics program. And so here I will cover the absolute basics um, of how to start out if you don't know anything. Uh, but importantly, I'll also cover some of the uh, important tools like learning the hotkeys that will make uh, that really help you to use Adobe Illustrator very, very efficiently. So the version of Illustrator um, that I'm using is the latest one. So this is Adobe Illustrator CC um, for the year 2020. Um, and when you first um, open up the program, this is what you get. So let's start a new document. So create new. And then let's just start with a basic eight and a half by 11 inch um, letter sized document. Okay, now before starting, I will um, just show you that you will be able to see my screen keys um, for any hotkeys that I press. I've made my mouse um, very large so you can see the cursor. Um, and whenever I click with a left click button, it's going to be appear red. When I click with right click, it'll appear blue, okay? So this is the first thing when you start Adobe Illustrator. We see our artboard here. And the artboard is just the area, you can think of it as your blank sheet of paper. It's the area where you'll, able, where you'll be able to create your objects. Uh, now, this is the default uh, workspace. When you first open up uh, Illustrator, uh, I'm used to using a different type of workspace. Um, so Essentials Classic is the one um, that I'm used to. Uh, so here you can see, you know, swatches, you can see the types of fills, things like this. Um, and what I've done is I've customized. So I've dragged and dropped, you know, the panels that I use uh, most often. And you can bring up any panel that you're looking for by just usually going to window and looking for the thing that you want, such as gradient or document info. So I've actually customized my workspace and I encourage everyone else to do the same thing with you know whatever tools that you happen to use a lot. So I have my own custom um, workspace. You know, this has all the panels that I use uh, most often. So the other thing um, before starting uh, that's useful is to use Control R. So that's the first hard key, hard key that we'll use. And this just brings up the ruler. So now we can actually see that this sheet that we're working with is eight and a half inches by 11 inches. Okay, so let's start by using, you know, one of the most basic tools, and that's gonna be the pen tool. So press P, and now we can see that our cursor now looks like the nib of a pen. And let's just click around. So if I click once, I click twice, and I click a second time. Now. What we're doing is we're adding different um, sections to this polygon. When we want to end um, the object, we just press escape. There we go. Okay, so we've created this object. Now, if we look at the top or even down at this preview, what we see is that at the left, this is telling you what the fill of that object is. Since this thing is white and our artboard is white, let's change the color to blue and then we'll see what happened. And then uh, this feature on the right is the stroke or it's the stroke of that path that we clicked out. Since it's hard to see, I'm gonna select the object and increase the stroke to 10. So this, you can think of this as the outline of that path that we clicked. Now notice that we have this fill, all the fill is doing is filling in um, this object from the last point to the first point. So suppose we start it again. Suppose we were creating a new feature. Notice as that I go along, it's filling it in and it's going from the last point to the first point. Okay, so we have these two objects. Notice that these are both open objects. So let's, how about we create a closed object? So let's go back to the pen tool. I'm gonna keep clicking. And notice that as soon as I try to close the image or I bring the pen tool close to the, um, the origin of the path, this new closed circle appears. And that's telling us that the object is going to be closed. So let's click this here. And now our object is closed. Okay. And so we can change um, 
the strokes and the fills just by selecting the object and choosing a different color. So we can choose, let's say, red as the stroke for this object and light blue as the fill. So that's the pen tool. Now, two of the most um, common tools that you'll be using a lot when you're using Illustrator are the selection tools. So the most common one here is the, is the selection tool. So this is this black cursor. You get it by pressing V. Now, what the selection tool does, you can think of it as changing the global properties of your object. What that means is that by selecting this object, I can click and drag it. I can move it around. Um, if I hover my cursor over one of the corners, I can rotate my object. If I go back, let's go back to the original shape. If I go here now, I can also scale the object by grabbing one of these um, handles. Right, So I'm clicking and dragging. I can change its shape, so I'm scaling it. Notice that it's scaling the entire object. Now, one of the most useful things, and this will be uh, throughout several of the lessons, one of the quick and um, easy ways to, to modify the scale tool is to use shift or out. So let's see what happens when we click shift. So notice that when I'm clicking and dragging, it's not saving the proportions of the original object, right? I can squeeze it in the y direction or the x direction. But as soon as I hold down shift and scale, it, sh it scales things proportionally. So x and y are both scaling the exact same way. Now notice that when I grab from this corner, it scaled it um, you know, with this opposite corner as the origin. If we want to scale things from the center, you hold down, you drag, but now we hold down the Alt button or the Option button in Mac. And notice again, you know, when I'm just holding Alt, it's scaling from the origin, but it's not proportional. So if we want to do both uh, scaling, um, both from the origin and proportionally, you hold down both Alt and Shift. So. If I click from this corner, I hold down now Option or Alt and Shift. Notice that it's scaling the object from the center and it's proportional. So this is one quick way to um, scale, your, scale your objects um, in a proportional way. So that's the Direct Select tool, that's V. Now another useful thing that um, the Selection tool does is it lets you duplicate objects very quickly. So if I hover my cursor over the object, now I hold down Alt, notice that my um, object, so I haven't clicked anything, I'm just holding down the Alt button, it changes to this um, dual cursor. So if I now drag the object, I make a duplicate of it without using, you know, uh, copy and paste. It's a very quick way to duplicate things. Now going back to what we learned, suppose I duplicate the object. So I have the object selected. I hover over it with Alt or Option um, held down. Now notice that I can make the duplicate object here, but if I start to hold down Shift at the same time that I'm holding down the Alt button, I'm creating that duplicate, but along the X direction, aligned with the previous object. Or if I hover down here, I'm creating the duplicate object directly below it um, along the Y direction. So this is one really quick way to quickly duplicate objects in, in a very um, well-aligned way. So this is one way to actually increase your workflow very quickly, just by knowing those different hotkeys, like holding down Shift or Alt. So that was the selection tool. So now what? Now the other tool that you can do is you press A. And notice that we have now have the direct select tool. So that's this tool here, the direct select tool. What the direct select tool does is it changes the local properties of an object. By that I mean when I click our click the object, we can see each individual anchor point that creates that object. So if I just click on one point, I'm now instead of when I click and drag, I'm not changing the you know the entire object. I'm I'm just changing the local um, points on the object. Now, if you have a 1D object like this, notice that I'm just changing 
the position of one of those anchor points. The other thing that shows up are these kind of handles here and what these do is um, when, right when you hover above it, it's giving you this curved line that's telling you one quick way to soften the edges or round the edges of your object. So notice that as I start to pull on that handle, it rounds um, the edges of that object. So let's go back to the original object here. So I showed you ways to scale um, an object just by clicking and dragging. Now an extremely useful way to also scale objects is up here under transform. You can find it by going to window and transform, but I have it in my panel here. So here we actually have ways to mathematically um, scale the object. This object will be scaled proportionally because we have this link, so we have our width and our height linked together. So let's say I make this width three inches and I'll changes and I'll changes the object size to three by um, whatever this height number is, and these numbers are linked. So if I wanted to unlink them, now I can change the height here, and it's unlinked to the to the width. The really nice thing about using this transform feature is that this understands math. So if I do three times 0.5, it goes down to this width. So this is actually really nice sometimes, especially when you're working with figures. And I'll talk about this in a later lesson using templates where the journal has very specific guidelines on how big your figures uh, should be. So this is one really useful, a very different way to scale your object using the transform panel. So now let's go to a 1D object. So these are kind of 2D objects. Let's make a 1D object. I'm going to go back to my pen tool. And I want to make an empty fill. So empty here is this. So it's this um, dashed um, square. And I'm going to click here. And I can click anywhere. But notice, again, whenever you hold down Shift, as soon as I hold down Shift, it gives me the choice of making my uh, 1D line either in the vertical direction at exactly 45 degrees or along the horizontal direction. So I'll make an arrow in the horizontal direction, like so. So this is a one-dimensional object. And if I zoom in here, notice that it's 1D, but it's given 10 points as its, as its width. But what the power of Illustrator is is that this is just a vector. So this is a one this is a one dimensional object, but it's uh, being provided with this, you know, this extra at attribute or stroke, uh, which is ten points here. So a really useful thing that we use, you know, a lot, especially in figures, uh, are arrows. So one way to change this stroke. So here, uh, whenever you want to change the properties, you can either go to stroke here or you can go to window and stroke. I have the panel already um, here. And here, this lets you change all the, all the properties of that stroke. So both the weight, um, you can give it rounded edges instead of capped, instead of square edges. But a very useful thing is using arrowheads. So you can choose different types of arrows to put either at the beginning or the end of your stroke. And you can also change whether that stroke is solid or a dashed line. And here you control actually the length of that dash and the gap between the empty spots. So another very uh, useful tool is the eyedropper tool. And the hotkey for the eyedropper tool is easy. It's I. So if I click I. Now I have, so first I selected this object. So select it first with V, with the direct select tool. So I'm selecting the whole object. Now when I click eyedropper, what this is doing is I want to change this object to have the properties of the object that I'm going to pick up with the eyedropper. So this is another quick way to quickly change the properties of objects and really increase your, your workflow when you're using Illustrator. Now notice one thing that um, here, uh, you can actually change how those dash lines are going around your object um, by clicking between these two options. So when you click this option, it 
make sure that your edges are always at nice dotted lines so you don't have empty spaces. So you can change between these two options. Now another really useful thing that we'll need um, that you'll probably be using a lot is how to make nice curved lines. So starting with a one-dimensional line, um, if you hit Shift C, we now have this tool. So you can also get it by hovering over here. It's the anchor point tool. What this does, once you click on your line, you can actually start to curve it in different ways. You can curve it different ways by clicking and dragging the different handles on that curve. So let's go back to this 1D line. And I want to show an important thing. So, you know, really for these tutorials, it's not just showing you the basics. I really want for people to understand how Illustrator works and how it treats objects. And that way you really, you know, then you start to really learn how to make really nice figures. So let's make a duplicate of this arrow. Remember, I highlight it with um, the selection tool. Now if I hold on Alt and I hover above it, I can make a duplicate. So let me make a duplicate just below. So notice that, so I'm zooming in here, this is a one dimensional object, right? So all Illustrator thinks of it as, as some, you know, some array of numbers and it's a one dimensional array. But it's, giving, it's being given the property that it has this dashed line and this arrowhead. So how do we turn this into a 2D object? You know, what if we wanna play um, with the shape of this thing, not as 1D, but as, as two dimensions? So what we can do, is, since this is just a one-dimensional path right now, you go to Object, Path, and Outline Stroke. So what this is going to do is this is going to turn our one-dimensional stroke into a, into a two-dimensional feature. See? So now we have a two-dimensional object. Right? So now this, this object is grouped, but notice that when I select it, it is now a a group of two-dimensional features and it is no longer 1D. So this can help if you want to start to fill you know this thing with different um, gradients or complex things um, but it's no longer 1D so you can't edit it in such a nice way. But this is a good thing to learn um, between these two different types of features you know when something is 1D or whether it's uh, two dimensions. Okay so that's the first you know very basic um, lesson. In the next section, I'll talk about how to make two-dimensional shapes and compound shapes, you know, squares and circles, things that we'll really use a lot in the future.